you disagree with that logic because I look at the food we eat as the only drug that everybody takes every day. But even if they're caught, the punishment isn't usually as harsh as drug trafficking. This is big crime. And why not? It's huge money. It's better than, than dealing drugs for them because no one's going to break your door down at four in the morning and arrest you for selling rubbish honey. <laughs> Larry says two things could deter counterfeiting before it starts. Tougher sentencing and the use of blockchain to track the supply chain through labels. So I think the situation is improving, just not enough. I think we need yeah, clearer laws, real penalties and real enforcement, not just a slap on the wrist. You can't legislate uh, crime away, but you can certainly, you know, make it make it tougher. But some of it comes down to the consumer. Because I think if we stop buying the really cheap, horrible product, actually, in the end, this fraud will be become far less of an issue. Buy things in their whole form. You know what a lobster looks like, but you buy like lobster ravioli. Sometimes there's no lobster in it. And always look at the ingredient list. Because if you know how to differentiate the real stuff from the fake stuff, the decision of what you put in your body becomes yours. The consumer does have power. Though we appear to be utterly disempowered in this debate, we're not. People should not live their lives in fear of going to the supermarket. Make it your mission as a consumer to try to buy, buy things that are better. <laughs>